I've just had a day in the studio, pretty busy day. I'm looking forward to going out to the hills again. I think I'm gonna draw a pillbox this time. So we're gonna head up, Robin's ready to go. And yeah, we're gonna cycle up this time and draw a pillbox. That's the plan, see how it goes. We're heading over to that far bit that's in the sun right now, right at the top of that hill. There is a pillbox and that is where we are headed. Now the climb is hard, but that view is more than worth it. And here is the pillbox. So plan is to do a quick drawing of the pillbox and head back time for dinner. That's my plan. As with a tree, as anything you're drawing, have a good look. And this is, I mean, draw things you're genuinely interested in, things that you're fascinated by, because when you need that extra bit of patience, it's so much easier. So let's have a look around. Now, I know you want me to go in it. I'm hesitant, but look, you can get, this, get the idea of the shape of it now. One, two, three, four, five. It's got five sides to it. Just wondering about the angle I want. What are you doing over there? Come on. I'm going to go in. Oh God. No, I'm not. I'm not going in there. Right, let's see if we can look in the window. Get an idea. Okay, back to drawing. Okay, so time to get drawing. Okay, so we're at the pillbox now. We are all set up. Got the GoPro with the help of this tree here. And I've gone for something central. I just like that symmetry in the building. I think that's an aspect that I like about the subject. So I'm gonna focus on that. Robin's just gonna mill around for a bit, I reckon. So if you want to reference image to draw along, just uh, get a screen grab of that. And then I'm gonna be focusing on the sketchbook. Um, this is just the sketchbook that I've been kind of playing around with for a while. Some sketchbooks are just kind of, they're quite random. Um, this is the one I just carry every day just in case something uh, catches my eye. Um, so yeah, let's find a blank page and then get started. So I'm gonna start with just making sure I've got the space on the page. This is a really cool subject, so I think I might take a bit of time with this. Not too much, but just the gesture in the trees and everything. Cool, the camera's really swaying. I hope you don't get dizzy from it. So I'm just going to go straight into this one. I'm fairly confident because it's there's a symmetry going on and I, that's kind of... Um, it's easier in a way. Um, so that's that front face. And again, I'm often using this cross to find the center, keeping really loose so I can focus on the proportions. I find when I'm focusing on being neat, and I have done that for a while, but I um, lose sight of proportion. When you're finding the angles um, on a drawing like this, it's always good to hold your pen up. So you hold your pen up level to the subject and that will essentially give you a much better idea of the diagonal. Often people hold their pen up to the subject and they hold it at the angle and they try and mimic that on the page. Instead, hold your pen up level and then read that angle off there. It's just something I find much, much easier to do. Again, if it's um, symmetrical, then you can run a line across. Um, we are pretty much bang in the middle here. So, um, so what I just did then was measure the halfway point on this face here is pretty much um, the distance to the edge of the pillbox here um, and again it'll be the same the other side because we're very central to it don't be too precious and then like I said you can run um, you can run along to match that to get that same angle I'm 
try and not it's quite tricky uh, talking through what I'm doing when it's something that I normally just do without thinking too hard it kind of, it makes it harder in a way but it's definitely worth worth it if um, it encourages people to draw I, do, I, I get to do my drawings from commissions and things like that so I don't mind doing these at all so yeah there's so I've defined the main form of the peel box here and in the middle of the peel box so I'm looking for the window here and it's just above the halfway point on this facade and I'm looking up at the peel box but it's only slight so there's going to be a slight um, tapering of these vertical lines they're going to go in slightly at the top so towards here so the third vanishing point is way off the page way 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 so it's really subtle but it's just something to consider when you're looking up at the subject you'll often um, have to consider the third vanishing point even though it's um, yeah, way out of sight there's another breeze coming through so hold on so that's looking fairly symmetrical again you can turn things upside down especially when you're working on something symmetrical helps you see things you can see things that you wouldn't have otherwise seen I've seen that this is pitching slightly which isn't in reality so I can correct that okay so I'm going to go ahead and draw this window and you'll get better at um, subdividing so I'm looking at this window and I'm thinking okay well this is this whole window is pretty much under just under a third of this whole facade um, I'm not going to measure out the third precisely because it's just not necessary but just consider the relationship um, of the forms within the subject forms within forms and don't necessarily think of them as what they are it's just think um, it's kind of a bit of abstraction helps I hope that this is clear on the camera. I can't see what you're seeing, but I'm trying not to move the sketchbook too much. Again, this um, face of the pillbox here, uh, because it's at an angle to this front face, it's the the angle of the edges change. Now, this isn't. Um, it's not experiencing too much in terms of um, diminishing in size, in terms of perspective. So, you, you know, you can kind of match closely and then pinch in a little bit, little bit. Just like these lines are tapering slightly, as are these. Uh, there's a great big fallen dead trunk which I'm going to place in. Again, it's, it's got its own angles and you can read off the parts of the building you've already drawn. Again, nothing is, at this point, nothing is fixed, nothing is particularly accurate, really. Just let go of that preciousness. It's very freeing when you do that. Everybody does it early days when they're drawing. I'm just going to tap the camera, so, yeah, I am kind of showing you what I'm drawing. Maybe it was a bit high, wasn't it? What I'll do is I'll angle you slightly. Yeah, that's a bit better. And alignment. You know, I'm looking to see this edge here. It's very dominant. So what's in line with this? There's a dark area of this tree which stops just past this line here. I'm constantly thinking that through. And looking at the angle there. This is such a cool pillbox. It's nice that they're perishing. It's a good sign.
I'm going to go into immense amounts of detail here. Just drawing a bit of brickwork. Again, all the lines parallel within this facade will be heading towards the same vanishing point, which, like I said, in this case is very subtle. Now this window is in the centre of this this face here, so remember this technique, drawing the cross on any square face, uh, not, I don't mean square as in square, not rectangular, but you know where the edges are perpendicular, then you can draw across and that's your centre point in perspective. Again, I, I know that they're in line, so I'll run a line across there and back down. Again, across, back down. Kind of swaying as well now. Standing on a slope, which isn't ideal when you're drawing. Okay, and again. Now, because this face, the corner is hidden, I can map it out still. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean I, I can't um, think about where it is and, and even just draw it in. Again, you can get bogged down in the, the perspective element, so look at the subject. You should be looking at the subject really as much as, uh, or if more, more than really, you're looking at the paper that you're drawing on. These windows have this really interesting step detail, which isn't so visible in this one because it's at the angle. Just going to put a bit of tone in. For me, the temptation is to rush in with, with tone, but it's good to map out the drawing beforehand. Now, again, this is just how I draw, so if you want to just go in with a bold marker and have fun, then that's, you know, brilliant. Just draw how you draw. An experiment, try lots of different techniques. See, the whole way drawing through that window is wasn't really looking at the paper much at all, just checking back in. So yeah, you can see that stepped in detail. This whole top face really of the pillbox is the bricks have all fallen down, which is what was on the floor earlier, um, and it, but they've kind of retained at the bottom. So I'm just going to gesture You'll notice I say gesture a lot, because that's pretty much what I do, all I do when I draw. I leave it up to your brains and your eyes to you know, fill in the rest, because it's just more enjoyable for both, I think, all involved. And this is a completely... looking for the really dark tone over the subject. And you can use that to really think about the alignment. Um, you'll learn to map, map things out um, and you'll look for the darkest tone because they're dominant and they're e easiest things to spot whether they're you know, out of um, alignment or not. The inside of this window is generally quite dark. There's a change of surface here, this is a concrete base. Alright Robin, come here then, come on. What are you doing? Robin's having a great time, she's covered in seeds. Covered. 
the tail is wagging a lot. So sometimes I might turn the, the um, sketchbook, you know, to get certain angles, but it's it's really good to get um, out of that habit. Um, so you're not relying on comfortable positions with your hand. I talk about that a little bit in the, um, the foundation perspective videos that I did. You know, all the exercises, instead of turning, you want to be, it's just, don't want to, yeah, you don't want to, always pick the easiest method, it's not always the best. And the brick as well has fallen away, kind of on a diagonal angle on this piece here. And it's a red brick, so with colour it's hard to sometimes pick out the tone, um, because we're working in grayscale here. Um, so you kind of have to just learn that over time. Now I know that the red brick is fairly dark in tone, but um, I would argue the concrete window is winning out there in terms of the dark tone. And because this corner is going into the trees a fair bit, you've got a kind of gradient of light where this corner got quite a lot darker. Um, again, that's where the bricks come away. I'm just going to really hint that. I'm trying to use different words than gesture. So the planar, no not the planar edge, spatial edge. I can't remember which one. I'll have to double check. Spatial edge. So where, when you're drawing a subject, um, so this edge won't be very dominant and won't be very dark in terms of a line, but when you have the edge of a shape and then there's nothing behind it so it drops back to the background, you really want to kind of exaggerate that line um, and that will give it more of a sense of um, three dimensions. This is looking quite a lot wider than over here, but it could be because I'm midway through, so you can kind of Double check, there's ways to double check. No, nope. just a bit of an illusion going on at the moment. Um, I do think the red brick is slightly darker than uh, the render that is has been exposed above. So I'm gonna go and put in some more hierarchy instead of tone, in terms of tone. Generally I'll be using mainly a vertical hatch. I like the aesthetic of it, but mainly, you know, it's just got to think of functionality. It's quick to hatch. For me, it feels, um, it feels good in this kind of position. Now this face is, is the darkest, partly through weathering, because it's exposed to the elements more, but also because it's got those trees around the edge. So I am going to, do the step detail. Yeah, you know, fairly symmetrical, but I'm looking at that window again. If you flip, gives you a better idea. Step up there. And because that is a brick render, sorry, the brick is on the render, the brick edge where the bricks are sticks out slightly more. So I'm understanding as well the construction of this. 
through drawing it. I've walked past it so many times and admired it, but until you draw something, you don't truly notice it. Or paint, you know. Take time to really look at something. It's a really kind of subtle horizontal texture to this, but the render is on an interior layer of brick, so it's, it is really subtle, less, um, more subtle than below in the red brick where brick remains. Which I've missed off there, so I should put that in. Again, just hinting it. Robin is currently nudging me from behind because she wants to go running again with the bike. She'll have to wait. Okay, there's a kind of deep crack below the concrete where it meets the brick. So now I'm looking for the tone. So I can really, you know, the hard part, I don't want to take, but the hard part is out of the way now. And you can really start to, to bring it to life, add more tone. There's so many ways of building up tone as well. I mean, as you'll see, I'm quite loose. I'll scribble at times and sometimes hatch and I'll do this where I go back and forth horizontally and really kind of put more waver in the line and that will form a kind of like a wavy hatch. But they all achieve the same because it's just a layering of lines. Um, so experiment, play around, see what works for you. I found what works for me um, through just, yeah, literally playing around. Also through drawing in the cold because that's really where my techniques kind of developed a lot mainly in New York where I drew the flat iron building and I was I think suffering from hypothermia I was so cold and lost the um, control of my fingertips like I am now kind of have that control and I had to use my whole arm and that really kind of um, was brilliant because um, looking back it's just changed the whole way I draw. And that, because it steps in, there's a really dark shadow in that top left internal corner of the window, which has given it loads of depth there, which I kind of missed when I was drawing this window, so I can go back and Do that. And yeah, it's happening here. find edge on the top there as well, so I put that in. <sighs> Robin's just taking in the view behind us. Robin's my dog, if you didn't know. For those that have skipped. Again, this has that same rendered, subtle, horizontal texture. But again, this side is dark.
It's damp. It's been raining really hard last night. So there's loads of really dark, kind of damp moisture stains. So that's the base almost drawn in. That's really given it some life there. Feels like it's really sitting in place now. So now I'm just going to draw in that Three. Bring out some definition in that. Again, I'm looking, okay, where does this tree stick out in line with the window? I'll draw down from the window. Use what you've drawn. So everything has a relationship, like I said. There's some long grass there. log actually goes right up there. So yeah, the pillbox is, you know, pretty much done. I can add more tone and add more detail, but I think what might really kind of reveal its character more is its situation. It's really nestled in to the trees there. So I want to celebrate that. The tree's are really dark around it so that'll bring this light face especially forward. So again these logs are fairly still get catching light whereas the trees behind the woods behind not so much so the lower part of this tree here where it finishes I know that that runs in alignment with this dark face here so I'm constantly thinking about that element of alignment it stops you getting carried away We're in the wrong direction, basically. Again, gesturing the textures. Haven't got all day, so. Okay, drawing the edge of that tree a little bit darker. trees further in the background now. And there's a yew tree there. So I don't think I'll put too much detail into the trees. We'll see what happens. There's a beech tree coming up here. I'm trying to get the angles. That angle was wrong, so I'm going to bring it back. It doesn't matter. You can keep. I know that thickness of the tree here. I'm looking to see, and I can see that it's kind of in line with that window edge, so I'll draw up from there. The birds are really going for it now. Gesturing some foliage that comes out and shades the pillbox. Goes in front of that branch, or the trunk rather. It actually forks into two this beach and you can see a hint of it here. Splits. 
some fallen wood. So you just slowly build it up and look for negative space. There's a fallen branch there that's really fine, so I'm just going to... You know, it's so complex, it takes me hours to do that with complete and utter accuracy. And it's just not going to add anything to the drawing. So don't be afraid to pick and choose where you want to spend your time on a drawing. You might look at the same subject and see it completely differently. Like it for different reasons, so you, you highlight those reasons. Robin is standing on this log at the moment, which looks good. And there's two people sat atop enjoying the view, which is quite cool, but I don't think I'll draw them in. I've got enough to draw here. So this part of the log, the underside, is, as well as absorbing more damp over time being darker, it's actually getting less light, so I'm going to start trying that darker. Again, there's wisps of light, really fine kind of grass, but it's autumn, so they're, they're quite spindly, not much to them. The sapling just coming up inside there, and there's a great big what looks like hornbeam, but I'm not sure. It's not important right now. Um, coming up here, feel free to correct me. Um, yeah. So then in the distance, these two trees here, oi, <laughs> these two trees here, their branches are coming over and there's lots of foliage. I'm not going to draw the individual leaves, but the trees, the lit, sorry, the branches are coming down over it. So that's what I want to gesture. This yew tree here has a branch that's like sagging here and coming that's quite dominant so I'll gesture that and then this tree I mean yeah I don't I won't commentate I'm just gonna draw for a bit these so this shape here look for the negative spaces look for those shapes that abstract shape and that'll help you there's so many of them when you're drawing a tree, so it can be a little bit intimidating. This tree in the back is really dark, probably the, the size from the centre of the window, maybe the darkest structure in this drawing. So I'm going to really kind of bring that out. In stages, I don't think I'll take it as dark as it is yet. I don't want to kind of throw the whole drawing. Again, this beach is lighter, but still darker in relation to the pillbox, maybe matching around there. The beech trees have got really smooth bark, so the gradient across it is quite nice and smooth. darker than the trunk here but not over here
Uh oh. I've just got a friend. So what, right, Robin? She's off to protect us. Tone. This this dark brown log here is lighter than the green woods behind. So forget colour and think of tone. Stay, Robin. That's not Robin, by the way. And just building up the tone over time. Turn the page here because I want to get this hatch, this shading in the, in the form flowing with the tree. There's one exception to the rule when I'm drawing trees, I like to build the shade up in the direction that the tree is kind of growing. It's such a part of the character of the tree. And I kind of learned that when I went to a life drawing class. And the tutor was adamant about direction of hair, the character of the hair, and how much that plays a part in the overall portrait, the overall drawing. And it's so true. It's true for trees as well. She comes in, and that's the woods again behind. that line there is actually the kind of the perimeter of the mound that this is sat on and the path runs down here so that feels like it makes a lot more sense now so this is all really dark woods I'm gonna pick it up 
and now rather than drawing it to the perimeter of the page. There's that fallen branch there, gnarly, but really fine. So and then there's long grass leading up to it. Obviously it's got a lot darker since we've been here because I came up close to sunset, so that is uh, something you need to consider, um, especially if you're drawing in the morning or in the evening where it's much more dramatic. Starting to hear the owls now. So here, this is really interesting, this section, because that's the yew tree on the mound, which is right, you know, level with the pillbox. This um, vertical hatch I'm doing here is the woods behind, which is now really dark. Um, but there's still a hierarchy in terms of tone. So you've got the bank, which is fairly dark, and on that bank you've got the trees which I'm just going to hint at in the distance. And then you've got some really small ones over there, a bit far away. It's all overall darker so I'm going to go over again. Yeah, that feels good. And the base of this yew tree here, which is going up, um, the trunk gets dark here because it's, um, you know, the foliage is concealing it, and yews have fairly thick, dense foliage, so that's quite dramatic, the change. It's still fairly directional. So, yeah, I don't want to... Okay. This was more about the pillbox, so let's think about the pillbox. I'm getting carried away over here. Um, I'd like this to feel more balanced, so I'm going to think about this tone here, which is darker because you've got the woods again, which is really, it doesn't have a lot of light right now. The pen's kind of failing me, but that's all right. They do dry out if you tend to do a quick sketch like this, especially when it's a bit cooler. Let's go veering off a bit there, wasn't I? It's just chaos in that foliage above, so don't try and <laughs> draw that perfectly because you'll never do it. It's just not um, possible. Again, this is still darker. If you just can't, I'm tempted to go for a crosshatch, but then it throws everything off. I don't have the time to really take the tone, the, the value of the tone. I don't have that daylight right now. So I'm gonna try and keep it balanced instead. Again, the foliage, build it up over time. Those, for the smaller leaves, bunched up, then it's a tighter... Oh, it's a scribble, isn't it? That's not lying. I'm scribbling. Um, it's a tighter scribble. And then for the... Um, we don't have a really example. They're all pretty, pretty tight leaves. So, for example, if they're close, if the branch is closer in the foreground, then you'll be doing a larger, looser scribble. If they're in the distance, tighter. And you go over and over to achieve... Um, tonal range and, and that density. This branch is kind of going up from the tree and then back down to the corner. It's quite dark so drop that in. I think that's added something. I'm getting quite cold now. I need to go and get my shirt. But I'm pretty much close here. Again, that is not bright white there. Sort that out. I 
This is this is um, looking at the edge of the peel box. The contrast and tone is much greater than what I have drawn. So it's starting to feel encompassed by the trees now. Again, that edge to define it. God, it's getting so dark. You can see over time, you know, if you had all day, you could really have such fun with the, the tone in this drawing because it's such a great range and contrast between this, you know, jutting out and then the woods, really dark woods behind. I'm going to just put some more detail in the foreground. The last of that wildflower that's dying back and I'm on down, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on Of how dark that tree is in comparison to everything else. Okay, yeah, I think this, yeah, this could go, this could be, you know, you could keep going. I'm running out of daylight, so we'll kind of conclude it. But I um, had a lot of fun with this one. I think it could go much further. Um, and you never want to take things too far, overwork something, but if you're still having fun then it's probably a sign that you know you could keep um, keep going with the drawing. Stop Luke, stop drawing Luke. No, can't stop. I'm still drawing. Okay. Okay, wait. A little bit more. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to stop today. <laughs> stop. And I'm really cold now, so I should cycle back. Um, great, I hope you found that helpful. Robin is patiently waiting, admiring the view. Great. So I'm going to cycle back now, add to my t-shirt design of worked on on the way here. It's just stunning up here. Even now the sun's almost gone down. It's stunning. Oh, I got a bit cold standing here for a bit too long. Ready, Robin? Yeah, we're ready. That's our destination. Back before dark. That's the plan. Go on then, Robin. Go on. <laughs>